Okay, team. First of all, the question as why Ruto must go can begin by asking the opposite. But why must he stay? Because according to me, he has proven that he is incapable of doing any other thing that uh, his, um, his uh, allegiance to the office of the president should do. Uh, for example, um, if you just ask yourself, which oath Ruto took, has he kept the oath of office? At the same time, in governance, Ruto should rule this country. There's a manual for ruling Kenya. Kenya is not just uh, a new invention that somebody can use the way he wants. Kenya is a country that has a manual. One, the constitution of Kenya 2010, that he has, he uses like a piece of paper. Secondly, we have laws of Kenya that is made in parliament. He doesn't apply them. Thirdly, he has with what he call policies made by the ministry. He doesn't use them. Ruto wakes up and makes announcements of anything. That's why even uh, Morara is busy telling him, you launch this. He launches everything. So the question as to why should Ruto stay in office is even uh, going to explain why Ruto must go. Because he's incapable, he does not know, and he's not interested to do anything like that. And fundamentally, uh, our constitution begins by saying, we the people of Kenya, we are the sovereign power, and Ruto has become the people of Kenya, while for us, we are actually foreigners in our own land. He has reversed the constitution that we have as is, is given now. So Ruto must go, and I have a few reasons here. The first reason is that Ruto is sick. According to me, he's mentally sick, because the amount of lies Ruto is making, and how he lies, there is no need of even trying to confirm that he's lying. You know, even if you are a husband, um, kuna wongo ukimwambia bibi, bibi cannot even uh, quarrel. They'll just laugh and say you need to be admitted in the hospital because there are some lies that are just showing you are sick. The second one I have is that Ruto has become so rich in the one year and a few months now I was looking at his network, what he has gathered, he might look to have gathered between the time we took office. He has gathered a minimum of 1.8 trillion shillings. And that is a equivalent of net worth of Safaricom, KCB, Equity Bank, National Bank put together. I remember that um, KCB employs over um, 60,000 people. How can someone uh, gather that amount of wealth with no employees. Gachago has uh, been seen to be now 35 billion uh, net worth with zero employees. Uh, how can someone be worth more than Safaricom and uh, has uh, no offices? There is no network. If you move to any town, you see Safaricom everywhere. You see KCB, even agents you see them, do they have the same level of establishments to make those kind of wealth they claim? So Ruto must go so that we can take the, his net worth and create another companies like equivalent to Safaricom, KCB, uh, Equity Bank, National Bank, to employ the unemployed young people. So in Ruto's stomach sits Equity Bank, Safaricom, National Bank, and Equity Bank. Can you imagine how that's possible? He has swallowed that money, and that money has swallowed from taxpayers' money. So for me, removing Ruto can mean creating, an, creating employment for the young people. The third reason I have, all our problems uh, start in state house. Then they are passed in parliament, which is used as a washing machine to wash them. Ruto has proposed people, they pass through parliament, dirty people, they are being cleaned by parliament. Sitting there, pretty uh, honestly, is uh, his friend, Paul Moses Vatangula. So Ruto has even taken over all the institutions from there. Our children, our children's children will never see a paisley because the way the economy is running, uh, unemployment of young people is 60%. The economy is growing at around 4.2%. And youth unemployment is growing at 24%. Meaning that it is not just that young people 60% of them are unemployed, it means that 60% of young people never see a pay slip. And I was sitting in Kisum one day, then I saw a young man, I was telling uh, Mudira, this young man was 43 years old. And uh, I'm saying young man because he has never been employed, he's sitting in a jobless kennel and he's 
43 years old. And I'm thinking that this man will die or at least reach retirement age without actually ever working, without a payslip. So how do you retire when you reach 60 or 55 years and you have never worked? In Idonwo, we say, iti yo kapokitiyo, which means you are, you are retiring before you work. How can someone retire before ever working? So Ruto brings for us a serious ex existential danger to the young people. And uh, the last point I have here, and this is a very legal point, and I'm sure any legal person in this room has to get this point clearly, Ruto has lost what is called effective control of government. When you lose effective control means unfit to rule, unfit to command. Why? Ruto cannot fulfill the aspirations that he gave to Kenyans, rights to education, right to uh, health, right, the rights in the Bill of Rights. He is incapable of doing it, and this is an economic issue because Ruto has no economic policy that can ever take us out of there. The second reason why he has lost effective control is that he is incapable of passing any budget or, uh, or, or finance bill which is compliant with the constitution of Kenya and laws of Kenya. And the, the other last reason why, when I finish, why Ruto has, has to go because he has lost effective control is that Ruto is the commander-in-chief of all the armed forces. And Ruto is not able to control the police, or at least he's the main enemy. That's why there's police brutality, there's a lot of killings, maiming, murdering, abductions, unlawful arrests, and harassment. If a commander-in-chief is not able to command, then he is not able to have effective control. And effective control, if you look at that term, has been used even to tell Joe Biden he cannot run for the U.S. Uh, presidency because he seems to be showing signs of not being in control of the U.S. And it can be used even to topple a president or ask a president to step down. So according to me, we have a commander-in-chief who cannot command, not fit to command, and therefore we can even tell the military that you have a commander-in-chief that cannot command anything, and therefore he should go home and let the person who can be able to address that issue come into force. And that person should not be any other person apart from the person who knows how to fix that matter. And I think that person should be somewhere in this group or at least in this collective. Thank you.